<laughs> is this a joke? <laughs> Are you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I swear to God, I, I thought it was edge pulls, black edge pulls. That's what it is. Change order. Actually, I want a fork, a spoon, and a knife. <laughs> Okay, we've got a fresh week at Pave to Pine. A lot happening this week. First up, we've got wall panels. Uh, so that involves some CNC work. Christian did run into some technical difficulties. Um, well, I'll just show you that. I didn't realize he had his headphones in and I snuck in behind him. The dust is a factor. Okay, so the guys are moving a lot faster than I can keep up with. Uh, wall panels are going up today. As you guys have seen, I didn't really show off the insulation install. Uh, Guy was starting it early this week, but he wrapped it up shortly after I left, I suppose. So here's a look at our 3M insulation. So on the ceiling, stuff in the pillars, on our wall panels, insulation stuffed in the pillars, insulation behind the headliner, and insulation in the floor. I believe Key is currently wrapping panels still. So if they're not all done yet, let's go see what that looks like. You still have to wrap this one? Yeah, this one's getting wrapped next. Come on. Okay, so this is one of our panels for the high roof, right? This is one of the top pieces. Yep. Anyway, this is the process. First is an eighth inch piece of foam. Okay, so next step. All right, so step two after the foam's installed. Well, now it's time for fabric. Uh, then that's really it. There is a step three. That would be applying your fabric and then stapling it to the back. We're still gonna count this as step three, but make sure you add glue to your edges when you fold it over. Okay, that's a full panel fabric cover and install. Christian did end up figuring out the CNC, so panels are cutting. Uh, that means Guy gets to throw up some wall panels this week. I'll show you the updates and the progress as those are going up. What else are we working on? Uh, Cole here is gonna be doing a test on the composting, sorry, not the composting, the incinerator toilet, right? Well, we'll show off the operation of this incineration toilet.
All right, there's our old friend. The incineration toilet. Burns the feces. Already ran it once. out the top. That's what's left after running it once. That is one test right there. So this incineration toilet from Cinderella runs on propane and 12 volt. Very expensive toilet, uh, but very cool. So essentially, uh, you use it just like a normal toilet. You flush it, you use a little doily. We're gonna show you that. You hit the burn button and it incinerates your feces. Uh, a little no mess policy. Okay, Cole's got this unit ready to go. Uh, step one, what do you wanna call this? Filter. Oh. A, fe a feces filter, a uh, similar process as a coffee filter. I think we're all familiar with how that's going to work. That's it. Okay, so now we've got a sample here. It looks like a... You've got, we've got our feces right here. Uh, this is our sample piece. It is an O. Henry. Um, this is not human feces. So we're gonna drop that in. So that's what it looks like. Close the lid. Push on. <laughs> and just like magic. Okay, so now what's happening in there? Incineration in progress. Okay, so our sample has dropped into here somewhere. Well, it's currently being lit on fire. 45 minute is the burn cycle and then it has to cool down and then you can open it up. I uh, couldn't help but notice that was only about a quarter of our sample. Do you know what happened to the other? Do you guys uh, happen to know what happened to the other half of our sample? <laughs> we couldn't help but notice we were only able to do a test with a quarter piece. I mean, it could have been me if I had the chat opportunity, but I missed that one. They were only this long. There was two in that bar. They were this long. I burned the full one the first time and I ate half the other sample. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Also happening this week is our electrical and water utility cabinet construction. So cabinets are built, now they just have to be bench fit with all the materials going into them. Need to put anything else on it? Maybe some duct tape. Oh man, how did you get that so perfect? Because we designed it that way. It's because we Come did on it. now! Come on! You gotta push it down and inward. I don't know how to open it. It just works out perfectly. Who built this beautiful thing? The computer. The computer did it. Oh, you didn't do it. And then John put the box together. <laughs> I just put I just put all the, the, the little blue pipes in. Okay, so we got water. Cole's got that all tied down nicely. You want to tell us what you did? Very simply, what is in this cabinet? Uh, this is your fresh water tank. This is basically plumbed on the de on the bench so that all I have to do is when we stick it in the van is send my drain out the bottom, hot water, cold in, cold out, and the water pump will be in here once we get it from Atlas. And yeah, it's a pre-plumbed cabinet. All we're gonna do is have two guys pick it all up. Uh, these are your water diverting valves. So oh, this is the back. This is the back side. What's yeah. that? That's the hot water tank. <clears throat> this is what you will see. <laughs> that is looking good. Winterization valve, hot water heater bypass, city tank diverter valve, all your controls. This is your winterization tube. 
stick it in a plumbing antifreeze so you can winterize your, your rig at the end of the year. Okay, so Cole has basically, uh, well, he's constructed the whole water system on the bench and it is set up to quick connect in the van. I think it looks very good. Are you happy with it? Well, I'm always happy with my work. He's happy with his work. Okay, Frankie is currently working on the electrical cabinet and it's also looking quite neat. Any words, Frankie? Uh, nothing much other than it's going pretty good, I guess. So here's his plan. This is the cabinet. It all has to fit. Hold on. All right, we're back for another week at Paved to Pines. I did miss an episode, I apologize for that. Got a little bit busy. But because of that, I'm gonna do my best to put together a really good long form episode showcasing everything that has happened over the past two weeks. We have a lot to talk about. We have our investor and new partner coming to visit Monday, Tuesday, super exciting. We haven't seen him since it's gotta be about a year uh, when he picked up his own van. This is actually how we met him. Started forming a relationship, talked a lot about business and his past endeavors, and it just was, it was a perfect fit. So we're excited for some good discussion about the business itself Monday and Tuesday, and we're gonna be setting up a pretty cool game plan moving forward. We've shared a lot with you guys when it comes to our business, but we have been busy over the past few weeks, and it's been just a lot of progress on builds. In the background, the team has worked incredibly hard on systems, uh, safety, all those things that need to happen when you're looking to scale. On the business side of it, every little minute is tracked, it's next level. But what that allows us to do is make better decisions for hiring, it allows us to pre-order materials a year in advance. All things that take a lot of capital and are a lot of big decisions uh, that you don't wanna mess up. So we're excited for the growth coming. We've got a team that has bought into this big vision we have. We want to set ourselves up as one of the most reputable camper conversion companies in North America. So when it comes to scaling, obviously we don't wanna lose quality. We pride ourselves on our craftsmanship. We've got a team of extremely, extremely extremely passionate carpenters, fabricators, and finishers. We don't wanna lose that. So that's why we've focused so closely on these three builds here moving forward and how we're gonna be able to scale without losing that. Because that's what's gotten us to where we are. If we put our heart into a build and our best product forward, we feel that that is one of the most sustainable features in a business, and that's what's gonna take us the furthest. And these things take time when it comes to also pumping out high quality builds because our client is our priority. So a lot of this stuff has to get done on the background. Obviously that's what Mitch and I get to work on up here a lot of the time is making sure our guys have what they need to succeed and to put their best work forward because we honestly couldn't do it without them. Our team is incredible. So this is a big thank you to our team. We could not do it without you guys. We have some of the best builders out there I still can't believe we have found the team that we have in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Little tiny city in Saskatchewan. High quality workers. All right, that's it. Okay, this is new. So, Meg by Meg by Meg by <laughs> Meg by came back from paint. It looks like the guys are starting to prep it for roof coating. So Magpie got a gloss black finish. That's an epoxy coating. Uh, it's gonna get a white roof. It's got white bumpers. It's looking very good. Okay, let's pop inside and see where we left off on Magpie.
before paint, this bus left off at the framing stage. Christian is now in here this week. We're working on the plumbing. Frankie's been pulling wire with Cole. Cole, what are you doing now? Fix the lights on the outside before spray foam, make sure they're all working. And Cole is running through exterior lighting. Uh, next up is spray foam. Okay, so a ton has happened behind me here. This build's coming together very quickly. So this is, just a recap, this is Abby that we're working on. This is our first Ponderosa spec build. The boys are absolutely flying. So I talked about a lot of the preliminary work that Christian put in and Frank and all the guys in the planning stages. Now that stuff is getting assembled, uh, well, it's coming together very quickly. So let's hop inside and take a look at all the stuff that we've got done. Okay, this build's coming together faster than I can keep up with. Just last week, we were starting panels, uh, we were running some final wires. I have a lot to show you guys. Okay, first up, let's talk about some wall panels. Uh, you guys saw the starting glimpses of those going in and getting wrapped last week by Guy. He has finished the job and they are also installed. We've got our wall panels installed. We've got our ceiling panels installed. More wall panels installed. Uh, this is a good look at, if you guys remember, the pillars getting wrapped. This got wrapped to about here and then this overlays and covers it up. Another thing we get to point out are the L-tracks that are mounted. These are actually covering up some seams in our panels, so it makes this look like one flush roof. These L-tracks are gonna serve a couple purposes. One, these become the mounts right here and on the ceiling. That's gonna be our cabinet mounts for upper cabinets. So anywhere where you see on the lower track, so right here, this is all used to tie in our base cabinets. This is the wall anchor and then the rest gets anchored right to the toe kicks. Okay, so located on the passenger side here, we have our plumbing cabinet. The goal here was fit the utilities in as little space as possible with all their recommended clearances and still allow for some storage to be fit into these cabinets. On this end, this is closest to the rear doors. That's all open storage. This portion here will become kind of just a little stuffy. Above here, huge space. We're almost two feet wide. Moving forward in the cabinet, right here we've got our isotherm. This is a four gallon. Heats off electrical, 120 volt, or, and definitely cooler, runs off of a coolant cycle. We have a loop connected to the vehicle. You can drive, it'll heat this up to about 195 degrees. Depending on your use, it's a mixing system. So obviously you're not gonna have a 195 degree shower that's gonna mix in with cold water and that four gallons gets extended a lot further. And lastly, at the very front of this cabinet, uh, we've got our water tank. This is our fresh tank. I believe in this unit, it's about a 35 gallon tank. Don't quote me on that though. And then down below, we've got our valves. So we've got a winterization valve, we've got a hot water heater bypass, and we have a city or tank fill. Okay, so, well, when do you plan on having that done? Like, uh, no, it'll be done today to go into the bus, or the van. Okay, so you heard it from Frankie, it'll be test fitted today. <laughs> if we get All right, Abby's coming together. 